and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie. In this SQL Server Quickie, I want to talk about a very specific performance problem that can occur on heap tables. Forwarding records. First of all, we have to clarify what a heap table is. A heap table is just a table without a clustered index. It's just a heap of unordered, unstructured data. Very fast for inserting new records, very slow when you are reading records. Reading records can introduce random I.O. at your storage and sometimes you can also hit forwarding records, which will slow down your read performance. SQL Server uses forwarding records when a record in a heap table has moved to a different physical location. Imagine you have a table with a variable length column and in the first step you are inserting records into the heap table and you are not storing any data in the variable length column. So far so good. But think what happens when you run an update statement against the variable length column. In that case, SQL Server has to expand the record and because of the larger record size, other records may be moved away from the same data page. In that case, SQL Server leaves on the original location a so-called forwarding record that binds to the new location where the record is finally stored. SQL Server has to use that approach to avoid the update of all non-clustered indexes on the same table. As you might know, when you create a non-clustered index on a heap table, the non-clustered index binds in the leaf level to the physical location where the record data is stored. Without forwarding records, all these pointers would have to be changed and that would tremendously slow down your performance. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I will describe forwarding records in more detail to you. I want to show you now on the flip chart how SQL Server can introduce forwarding records on a heap table. Imagine very simple table definition, first column integer data type, something else. Second one a jar of 2000 and the third one we have a far jar of 2000. Imagine now we are inserting four records on a page of 8 kilobytes. First record, third, second, third and fourth. So we have our integer column 1, 2, 3, 4 and now we are only storing here our 2000 bytes of the char column and the far char column is just empty. So you can see when you're doing the math, all our four records can be stored on one page of 8 kilobyte. Now imagine we're running an update statement and we set C2 or C3, sorry, to some value means SQL Server has to expand now every record and insert those 2000 additional bytes. So you can see when we're adding 2000 bytes for the first record, 2000 bytes for the second record, the other two records, record 3 and 4, has to be moved away from that page. Makes sense because we can store on one page of 8 kilobytes only 8 kilobytes of data. In that case, SQL Server moves those records to different pages and SQL Server places on the original location a so called forwarding record. This means when we are afterwards doing a select against that table, SQL Server reads the original position with our first page read and in addition SQL Server has to follow those forwarding records and read the other pages where those records are currently stored. So we are introducing during the read operation a huge overhead because we need additional logical reads to find the location where the records are really stored. 
Let's switch now over to the course of our management studio and I will show you with a concrete demonstration that specific problem that can occur on heap tables in SQL Server. In the first step I'm creating here a new database and I'm also enabling the session option statistics.io so that SQL Server tells us for every query the number of logical reads that we need. As a second step I'm creating here a simple heap table with three columns. As you can see from the table definition, I have an identity column, a fixed and also a variable length column. In the next step, I'm inserting four records without populating the data in the variable length column. All four inserted records are fitting now on one data page of 8 kilobytes. When we perform a simple select statement against this table, SQL Server reports one logical read back to us. But imagine what happens now when we run the following update statement. We are expanding here now the variable length column with some data. This means every record gets wider and SQL Server has to move now several records off the page to a different one. And when this operation occurs, SQL Server leaves at the original location a forwarding record. This behavior is needed because non-clustered indexes are still pointing to the old location of the record data in the leaf level of the index. This approach will speed up your update statements in this specific case, but will slow down every subsequent select statement. When you run now the following select statement again, you can see that SQL Server reports now four logical reads back to us. That's a huge difference to previously, where our select statement just needed one logical read. We can also check the number of forwarding records on our heap table by calling the dynamic management function sysdmdb index physical stats. When you are calling that function on a heap table and passing in the detailed mode, SQL Server returns you the number of forwarding records on the table through the column forwarded record count. As you can see here, we have now two forwarding records on that table, out of four. To get rid of these forwarding records, you can now rebuild your heap table. When we check afterwards the forwarding record count again, you can see that they are just gone. That's a very interesting point. DBAs are always looking on index fragmentation, index rebuilds, and index reorganize operations. But nobody thinks about forwarding records in heap tables. If you are working with maintenance scripts, it's always also a good idea to check the number of forwarding records on all of your heap tables. In this SQL Server quickie, you have seen how forwarding records on heap tables can slow down your reads because of the additional needed logical reads. When I'm performing SQL Server health checks for my various customers, I'm always checking for heap tables and also for forwarding records. And trust me, there are a huge amount of heap tables and even forwarding records out in production where the DBAs have no clue about it and their introduced side effects. As a general rule of thumb, I'm always recommending using clustered indexes on tables to get rid of forwarding records. Of course, there are some extreme scenarios, like the last page insert latch contention, where you can introduce performance problems with this approach. But for the most databases, it will work. So thanks for watching me again and see you very soon on my next SQL Server Quickie.